there's going to be a lot of aspiring wrestling commentators that are going to listen to this interview and they want to hear your story, but they also want to know, like, how did they get there? Like you were on mm. the inside, you were the person that was looking for the on-air talent. What do you look for? How can you become a better commentator in wrestling? I always looked for people who showed adaptability. I always look for people who had um, a really conversational style. Now you hear that and you're like, well, what does that mean? It, it means not sounding like a newscaster where it's like, well, this morning the cat fell out of the tree. Like no one talks <laughs> like that. This is how people talk. I always, I've, I've talked about like Mike Tirico and, and Michael Cole. That's their normal speaking voice is that they're just delivering and it's amplified a bit. Yeah. You, if you sound like a weatherman, it just feels so unnatural because I know I'm like, just talk normally. Just, just do that. So, and there's some bad habits that I think get developed within the professional wrestling world that I understand what WWE wanted. And you just know it's not going to necessarily translate. So every once in a while, I try and take an opportunity to be like, Hey, this is positive, but maybe try and change this. If WWE is your end game and it's just not for everybody. I've heard a lot of commentators wrestling and otherwise say less is more. Can you speak to that? It's what I was saying before about being a minimalist is that you don't need to speak wall to wall within a segment. Again, something Cole taught me, but just you can let moments breathe a little bit. You can just wait. You don't have to talk through every last thing. You don't have to call every last move. It's okay. And especially if you don't know, don't say anything. Mm -hmm. it, it sounds so simple, but there's also that pressure like, oh, I, I'm going to say something. I haven't spoken in a moment. And it's just it's okay. And you, you do have to remove your ego to an extent, especially if you're being the play-by-play -play guy. Yeah. I, I had the good fortune, as I mentioned, of working between Byron Saxon, a, a great baby face commentator, and then Corey Graves, a great heel commentator. It's not about me. It's about getting those opinions out from Graves and Saxton. So I have to be, to use a basketball terminology, the point guard who doesn't score. It's just, you have to get assists here and there. And then every once in a while, if we get you for a spot up three in the corner, it'd be nice if you hit it. <laughs> so <laughs> that was always my mentality is just try and keep the ball moving. 